Lenby Dell played a big part in opening up over a quarter of Australia, and yet his name might now be known only to older Australians and some four-wheel drive travellers. But some history first. In spite of the inhospitable nature of the area north of the Nullarbor and west of the Stuart Highway, Aboriginals had survived there for tens of thousands of years, hunting, travelling and trading between the sparse water sources in the area. When white settlers began to explore the region, many were defeated by its harshness and some died. The few that did succeed during the mid-1800s were often aided by local natives, but they saw little of the country beyond their route, so by 1930, a vast part of Australia was still unmapped. Donald Mackay decided to privately finance and participate in mapping this unknown area by conducting aerial surveys over roughly one third of Australia, sensibly during winter months between 1933 and 1937. Then, even the highways to the south and east were little more than tracks. After Germany's use of flying bombs in World War II, and the coming of the atomic era, Britain was looking for somewhere to test their rockets and bombs. At that stage, Australia was still part of the British Empire, and it was decided that an arid area west of the Flinders Ranges in South Australia would be suitable. It was named Woomera, an Aboriginal word for spear thrower. As an aside, the Flinders Ranges received their name after being sighted by Matthew Flinders from Spencer's Gulf. During the first years of the 1800s, he circumnavigated Australia and by charting much unknown coastline, he confirmed it was one continent. He also suggested the name Australia. In 1946, Sergeant Len Biddell was given the task of setting out suitable sites for a rocket range in an area where few boots had trodden. In 1952, he was also tasked with finding sites for atomic testing and set out sites 200 kilometres west of Woomera, initially at Emu Field and then Maralinga, where the UK would conduct eight nuclear tests between 1956 in 1963. Len had become interested in mapping and surveying during his time in the Scouts in Northern Sydney and after leaving school took up surveying work before enlisting during World War II and surveying airstrips in New Guinea. Back home after the war he was assigned to survey the Woomera area and after his discharge in 1948 and a short break returned to continue working on the site. Access was required to observation posts along the trajectory over undeveloped desert country, so he formed the whimsically named Gun Barrel Highway Construction Party, as he intended tracks to be as straight as possible. They set about constructing graded tracks in the area, which, drolly, would all be named highways. In 1955, less than 20 years after Mackay's aerial survey, the party started heading west from Victory Downs Station in the NT. Roughly 1,400 kilometres later, the Gun Barrel Highway was finished at Carnegie Station in WA in 1958. About midway, after drilling successfully for water, they established Giles Meteorological Station to provide weather information for the range and testing. His grader now rests there on display, having pushed dirt for over 30,000 kilometres. Over the next few years, more roads were called for, so all up the team constructed roughly 6,000 kilometres of roads through and around three of Australia's great deserts and a number of ranges. With the annual rainfall of around 180 millimetres and temperatures between freezing and 45 degrees, conditions were often arduous. But Len would set off alone in his Land Rover, working well ahead of the construction crew and surveying with a theodolite, the sun and stars. He left markers to guide the following D6 dozer and sometimes signalled his location with a mirror or smoke. A caterpillar grader followed the dozer for the final trim. 
The crew of seven included a mechanic, cook and various transport drivers. He placed numerous information plaques along the route, but over the years many have been stolen or vandalised and subsequently replaced. About 20 kilometres southeast of Lake Mackay, named after Donald Mackay, is Sandy Blight Junction, named after Bidell developed that affliction, now called trachoma, while nearby. Over time, 700 air and land tests were conducted, although the last rocket fired in 1971 to launch the weather satellite Prospero X3, Woomera still remains a defence site which includes Maralinga in its prohibited area. Len is credited with opening up roughly two and a half million square kilometres. With his tracks subsequently aiding oil and mineral exploration, scientific research and administration of the area. Most tracks still exist, although maintenance is now sparse and some are overgrown. They still attract serious four wheel drivers, but because much of the area has been returned to traditional owners, many tracks now require permits to traverse. Some areas are now simply off limits to most Australians. Throughout the testing, bureaucracy had paid little attention to the welfare of original inhabitants, so around 1,200 Aboriginals in the area were exposed to radiation. Many Aboriginals and soldiers associated with the testing later developed radiation-related diseases. Evidence suggests Britain was less than honest with Australia about residual radiation and slack with remediation, although it made two attempts to decontaminate the area after testing finished and again in the 1990s. By age 40, Len had explored more of Australia than any before him. He was practical and innovative, an author, road builder, surveyor and a great bushman. His recognition includes the British Empire Medal and an Order of Australia and an asteroid, a Mallee species and a mountain bear his name.